What is up guys, it's your boy Steady Chaos, this is Steady Chaos Production. So I wanted to hit you guys quickly with some gaming news and give you some of my thoughts on the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S, their pricing, and how I feel as though, and many others feel as though, including developers, the Xbox Series S could be a problem for multi-platform games. Let's hit it right after the break. All right, guys, so let us take a peek here real quick at CNET.com. So, of course, unless you're living under a rock when it comes to gaming news and you're anticipating these next-gen consoles, the Xbox Series S all-digital version was announced by Microsoft a couple days ago. So you see here a picture on the left and the Xbox Series X on the right. The Xbox Series S is definitely small. It's very, very slim, has a very, very small attractive form factor, and it comes in at $299, you see here, and the Xbox Series X comes in at $499. $500 is pretty much the price I expected. Um, I, I didn't think it'd be any lower than that, although I feared it could be a little higher. I thought it maybe it could be $549.99 or $599.99. So to see it come in at $499 is definitely good. So really quick to look at some of the specs on the Xbox Series S in case you haven't seen them yet. The Xbox Series X has pretty much the same 8-core, 16-thread Ryzen Zen 2 processor that's custom made. 3.6 gigahertz on 8 cores and with SMT 3.4 gigahertz on all threads. Um, so here we come to the GPU. Now this is where it takes a big hit. Only has 20 compute units on the Xbox Series S compared to the 52 compute units on the Xbox Series X. Also the Series X running at 1.825 gigahertz and the Series S running at a pretty low 1.56. Uh, this is perhaps the biggest problem for multi-platform games that some developers and other people have raised though with the Xbox Series X and that one, that's when it comes to video memory. 16 gigabytes of super fast GDDR6 RAM uh, uh, 320 bit interface, 10 gigs allocated at 560 gigs per second, and 6 gigs allocated at 336. When you look over at the Series X, it has 6 gigabytes less of total video RAM, so it has 10 gigabytes total, and the RAM is also slower. 8 gigs of said RAM is 224 gigabytes per second bandwidth, and the rest, 2 gigabytes of really slow 56 gigabytes per second, which is allocated to the rest of the system. So, when you look at it that way, only eight gigabytes of RAM is usable to the developers on the Xbox Series S. That could be a problem. And then they both have SSDs, a smaller on the Xbox Series S. And the Xbox Series S is aiming for 1440p res at 120 frames per second. There's no way it's gonna get that with regularity. I'd say it's gonna get 1440p at 60 frames per second on most games. And you have the Series X, forget this 8K60, that is nonsense. Technically, the Series X can put out 8K, but there's no way in hell it's playing anything at 8K60 unless it's a really, really like cheap 2D side-scrolling indie game. Um, but yeah, the Series X will aim for 4K 120, but more often than not, it'll probably be 4K 60. And then release date is November 10th for both consoles. And again, the price $499 in the Series X and $299 in the Series S. So. Let us really quickly take a look at how that compares to the PS5 specs. PS5 specs, again, another custom 8 core Zen 2 processor at 3.5 gigahertz peak with a frequency that is variable. Uh, this is pretty much the same CPU as the Series X and the Series S by and large. The GPU comes in at about 10.28 teraflops with 36 compute units at 2.23 gigahertz maximum frequency, but again, that is also variable. Uh, GPU RDNA 2, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. So again, 16 gigs of RAM compared to only the 10 and 8 that is usable on the Series S. Memory bandwidth 448 and a custom um, solid state drive, which is extremely fast. And a 4K player. There's no price yet on the PlayStation 5 and there's no release date yet, though I believe that the PlayStation 5 is probably coming out sometime in mid to late November, if I had to guess. And it's going to have to be $499. There's no way that Sony can come out with a $549 or $599 PlayStation 5, especially considering now consumers have the really affordable Xbox Series S for only $299 and the reasonably priced, in my opinion, Xbox Series X at $499. So I would expect the price to come in at $500 for a PlayStation 5, and I'd be shocked if it's anything higher. 
But now onto the main concern and the main reason why I made this particular video is developers voicing their concerns for multi-platform games for the Xbox Series S. You see the title here. This is on PSU.com in their news section. Now, this is what some of the developers had to say across the industry. So really bummed about this RAM situation on the Series S. This isn't easy to compensate and drags down the base spec quite a bit for next gen multi-platform. Uh, so it says RAM increase was already small compared to previous gen and now it's almost non-existent basically because the Series S only has eight gigabytes of usable RAM, which really isn't all that different than the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And now they're gonna have the Xbox Series S and that's gonna be the lowest common denominator for next gen consoles. So say they leave previous gen entirely behind, it's merely a next gen game. Well now, all the assets in the game world that they create around these next gen console specs, which are pretty similar between the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, now they have to worry about the Xbox Series S only having eight gigabytes of usable RAM. How does that affect the game world? You know, how does that limit the more powerful PlayStation 5 and Series X, um, and to what degree does it limit them? That This is really kind of concerning. So you have David Mickner, a multiplayer design with Call of Duty developer Infinity Ward added, it really is, but I can't stop thinking about the fact that they're releasing a lower spec console that will serve as a bottleneck and then it says, granted, transition into next gen is always bottlenecked by last gen for a while. But what happens once we fully transition out of last gen into next gen, say by late 2021 into 2022, when games are no longer really being made for the PS4 and the Xbox One X, what happens for those next gen games, those next gen multi-platform games? Are they really going to be held back? Well, this developer is really concerned about that, releasing a lower spec console that will serve, and he calls it a bottleneck. That's pretty aggressive. And then you have Dan Weiss, a gameplay programmer with Squanch Games, never heard of him, didn't pull any punches when it came to his opinion about the S. Then he goes on to say, now GPU on paper, this one makes sense, have the box aimed at 1440p60 instead of 2160 and cut down the GPU, but let's be perfectly effing honest here, neither the Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5 are 4K60 machines unless we're cutting IQ from last gen. They can F off with the 8K 60. <laughs> it says 690, but I think they 60. So he's not even too impressed with the 4K 60 touted capabilities of the next gen consoles, at least in terms of consistently hitting that benchmark with every next gen game. And now all of a sudden you have to worry about the Series S, which is gonna be this lowest common denominator. And who knows if that's even gonna be able to hit 1440p 60 on a consistent basis with only 20 compute units. And then ID Software's lead engine programmer, Billy Kahn, added the memory situation is a big issue on the S. The much lower amount of memory and the split memory banks with drastically slower speeds will be a major issue. Their words, not mine, these are developers. Aggressively lowering the render resolutions will marginally help, but will not completely counteract the deficiencies. That scares me even for the 3090 because I've got a new PC, which I've been talking about ad nauseum on my channel. I got it a couple weeks ago, so I'm not gonna dive into all the specs on it. If you are interested in that, you can check my previous videos. I have unboxings, benchmarkings, all that stuff. But with a brand new PC and a Ryzen 3950X, I'm thinking about getting the 3090 to pair with that for next generation and maybe holding off on the next gen consoles. But if, let's be honest, most of these games, they're, they're created with consoles in mind first. They're optimized and generated with consoles in mind first. And as we just talked about, the lowest common denominator is gonna be the Series S now. So if they're optimizing for those games, if they're if they're creating these games around these consoles and you have this weak Series S now with hardly any RAM, is it gonna hold back these games, especially should I even get a 3090, you know? How much is it gonna hold these games back? Would a 3090 be absolute overkill? Yes, it probably, I mean, it's a $1,500 card. It probably will be overkill. But I don't want next gen games to be compromised so much that they can't even ever take advantage of the 3090. You know, that's what's concerning me. Uh, really, at this point, all you may see for games that really harness all of the ability and all the power of these next gen consoles are exclusives on the PlayStation 5. Any exclusive on the Xbox Series X is also going to be on the Series S. So, a game that could take full advantage full power of the Series X is always going to be bottlenecked or limited by the Series S. That is really, really concerning for Microsoft. Microsoft should have just made a digital only box 
without a disk drive, without a 4K Blu-ray player, saved themselves 50 to 100 bucks there, skimped on a couple other things maybe, but kept mostly the same specs. Uh, developers on the Xbox Series X that are making exclusives and want to make the, the most visually arresting game they possibly can to use every ounce of power the Series X has to offer, they're going to have to make a decision and they're going to have to talk with Microsoft about like, creating a game that is exclusive for the Series X and abandons the Series S. And that is going to cause problems because then you're going to have these people that thought that the $299 price tag on the Series S was a great entry price tag to get into next gen gaming and then all of a sudden they might be faced with a situation where certain games are not on the Series S because it would hold back the Series X. What a mess. Microsoft, what have you done? What have you done? I get the value proposition. I get it. It's a good value buy. It's $299. But having way less RAM and a way weaker GPU is, it's concerning. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Are you concerned about this Series S console and its ability to potentially hold back next-gen gaming, particularly multi-platform games? for the entire generation and for the new generation of RTX 3000 cards. I really wanna know what you guys think about this topic. Are you concerned? Are people overblowing this? Am I overblowing this? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And we will see you guys very soon. Later.